Welcome. This is the sketch organized solve for Gauss's law. So for Gauss's law, we want to start by imagining our charge distribution. And the easiest way to help that is to draw our charge distribution from very importantly two perspectives. If it's a sphere, it doesn't really need two perspectives, but for a, another surface, for another shape, it's very, very important. So we're going to look at an infinite plane. So for our infinite plane or infinite slab, it might look like this from the side, but then it's going to look like this from the face. <clears throat> so we need both of these in order to understand uh, what's going on with that, and then we want to choose a Gaussian surface with the same symmetries as our shape. So it's a lot easier for many people to kind of think of a infinite plane as an infinite square. Sounds fine. So we can choose kind of a rectangular prism where our face might look like this. And we'll talk about the sides soon enough. And then what we're going to think about is how many regions we have to solve for this. So for each region to solve, What we want is we want a new Gaussian surface with only one face that has non-zero flux. So each time that we do this, if we only have one face with non-zero flux, then we don't have to worry about the other faces and we're feeling really good. And so the face with the non-zero flux passes through the point or area of interest. And we want to draw these Gaussian surfaces with dotted dashed lines or different colors. So we see them both using different colors and dashed lines. For this side, we'll find later that because of planar symmetry, we have zero electric field at the exact center. So we would want to start one of our faces at the exact center. We'd want to then extend it perpendicular to the field so that there's no flux from those sides. And then as we have it like this, this would then be the point of interest that we care about. But we might also think about a point of interest inside of the rectangular slab. And for that, we could then draw a Gaussian surface starting again at the center and extending like this. So that is what we're looking for for our sketch step. We could then also draw for down below here and down below here if we really want to. But right, we can also kind of assume a little bit of symmetry. So in our organized step, we have our Gauss's law. And our Gauss's law has two sides to it. So we really want to approach both sides. We have the closed integral of e dot dA. And that's equal to, we're going to kind of split it up with, right, the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. 
So over on this side, when we say closed integral of u dot dA, we mean the integral over base one of the electric field at one dotted with dA one plus the integral over phase two of the electric field at two dotted with dA two and so on and so forth. So what we want to do is of course write justify if we did our sketch step right only one face is non-zero. And remember a sphere only has one face and then if we've chosen the right Gaussian shape then we want to justify that our electric field is constant along that face. Why are we doing all this? We're doing all this because this is a really scary surface integral of something that we don't know yet, right? We're trying to find the electric field. But if it's constant along the face, then if we can do these, then our closed integral of E dot dA is equal to just EA, and then we have just an integral of dA, so AA along base A. So that's what we want to do for all of this, right, is that for this face we get that. Over here for the charge enclosed, our first thing is that the charge enclosed is equal to the integral of rho dv. And so what we want to do is we want to write rho as a function of a variable. So for example for this we would write rho is equal to rho naught for some values of z. So we have h over 2 z negative h over 2 to positive h over 2. And then we'd have that rho is 0 for z less than negative h over 2. And we have rho is 0 for z greater than h over 2. So this could be an example for this infinite slab, right? For other things we can do different ways. And so then if we have this, then our charge enclosed is equal to the integral of rho 1 dv1 plus rho 2 dv2. And then we integrate up to the end of the surface. So if I am doing here, I only have to worry about this charge density area, but if I'm doing here, I have to integrate from my start to the end of this charge density, and then up in this area through this charge density. It's trivial for this case because this charge density is zero, but a very good useful thing to do. And then for our uses, dv is 4 pi r squared dr for a sphere, dv is 2 pi r l dr for a cylinder, and our dv is adz for planar. So then we can plug right in there, and then we also need to know the area of things, but we hopefully know that from other times. So once we have this, then our closed integral of E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now we have the electric field of A times the area of base A is equal to this charge enclosed
And then we solve charge enclosed for each region. And then we finally solve for the electric field of A for each region. So if we have these four regions, then we would have to have four answers, right? For the electric field at this point, at this point, at this point, and at this point. Very often we'll only have two or three, sometimes just one. So this is how we use sketch, organize, solve to solve for electric fields of Gaussian surfaces with a planar result as an example.